Coming up next, a former Chula Vista City Councilwoman and her brother plead guilty to felony charges. Some neighbors are furious about streetlights on Fury Lane. Details in a live report. Working for you to explain bonds on your ballot and how governments pay them off. NASA's Artemis II practice mission lands in San Diego. We'll tell you how coming up. Swimming into the spotlight, local marine biologists have reeled in a remarkable discovery. I'm Ariana Cohen with the fishy tale of a newfound species. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Former Chula Vista City Councilwoman Andrea Cardenas and her brother have pleaded guilty to felony charges, admitting they defrauded the government. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal has more tonight from the downtown courthouse with what Cardenas' attorney had to say about his client's future. And we knew that a deal had been in the works for a while and today that announcement was made during court. Uh, the former councilwoman and her brother admitting they lied to the government to get money. So here's the moment that Andrea Cardenas entered a guilty plea. Take a look. Did you have enough time to speak with your attorney about your guilty plea? You showed me this blue change of plea form that has your initials and signature on it. Did you have enough time to review it with your attorney and understand it prior to signing it? I did, Karen. The form tells me that you're pleading guilty to count, count two and count eight. In exchange for that, the people are agreeing to formal probation, that you would be sentenced in six months. And it was hard to get a good look at Cardenas. Uh, her attorney blocked the view of her. Uh, she was soft-spoken as she entered guilty pleas to two counts of grand theft. She admits to lying on her application to EDD to collect unemployment benefits, and she admits to lying to the Small Business Administration to collect a PPP loan. Her brother, Jesus Cardenas, uh, entered guilty pleas as well, admitting he, too, defrauded the government. Andrea stepped down from her Chula Vista City Council seat last week. Here's what her defense attorney told Told us outside the courtroom today. We went through the discovery, went through the thousands and thousands of pages of reports, and came to the conclusion that for her, as it relates to her, uh, for her mental health, and more importantly for the community, that we put this to an end and we conclude this investigation. She's, of course, remorseful for uh, what's happened over the last several months and her conduct over the past several years, but that doesn't take away from the service that she's given to her community. Now Jesus must complete two years of probation before he can apply to have his felony charges reduced to misdemeanors. Andrea doesn't have to wait that long. Uh, she could have hers reduced as early as August during sentencing. And that's what her attorney says that they're focused on right now is convincing a judge to reduce her felonies to misdemeanors. And he thinks they have a good shot. She does not have a criminal history. Uh, she did not plead guilty uh, to any violent crimes. Now, should a judge agree to reduce those charges to misdemeanors, uh, she would not face any jail time. Kelly Hassett, all CBS 8. Thank you, Kelly. Right now, the Escondido City Council is reviewing a newly proposed policy aimed at tackling homelessness. Escondido's mayor says it would reject the state's housing first approach in favor of focusing on public safety, bringing tougher consequences for homeless people who break the law. We'll bring you the latest from the city council meeting tonight at 11 on CBS 8 News on CBS 8.com as well. Some people are furious on Fury Lane about traffic lights that are being installed at an intersection in unincorporated La Mesa. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is working for you on this story. She talked with those neighbors and the county about how it's working to keep that intersection safe. Kirsten joins us live now with more. Kirsten. Yeah, we are here at that intersection. It is Calle Verde and Fury Lane. If you take a look behind me, we're working for you on this story. Some of the neighbors we talked to in this area say they welcome this change and this intersection is now safer because of these street lights. Other neighbors say this, this just doesn't fit the neighborhood. It's like the intersection made a way to intrude into our backyard. This homeowner near the intersection of Fury Lane and Calle Verde says this has got to go. Right now they don't even have the lights on, but the, the street lights are lit and the white lights are lit. It's like daylight at nighttime. One neighbor is dealing with this. If you take a look behind me, you can see that there are street signs just hanging over her fence, tall poles, and those lights get really bright at night. And not far from there, this neighbor says this once gorgeous view is now obstructed by street poles and those come with cameras. With this view in this backyard, the house has a certain value. What 
what they've done now is they have diminished that value along with the quality of life. Bob Barrett says all of this is just unnecessary. If you're going to put in something in a residential neighborhood, mm -hmm. put something that fits in the neighborhood. They put four more street lights with cameras that I'm concerned about because they could be encroaching in our backyard when my kids play. We went to work for you on this story to get answers about why these street lights were installed and what can be done to make their presence less of a burden to these neighbors. Donna Durkle with the San Diego County Land Use and Environment Group says the traffic signal is still under construction. They've installed new street lights and will remove the old ones. That means fewer poles in the air. The county also says the street signals themselves will have blinds on them that make them visible to oncoming traffic only, and they won't be visible in anyone's yards or homes. The county goes on to say the signal was approved by the County Board of Supervisors back in 2021 to make the intersection safer from traffic accidents. And the intersection is near Avocado Elementary School and a private preschool. Some neighbors say something's got to give. This monstrosity that they put here, I'm not sure it's necessary for such a small, it's a two lane road with a T intersection. I don't know why you would need something so massive. This is a live look at Fury Lane and Calle Verde. While we were out here working on this story, we actually saw a neighbor come out to thank the construction workers who were installing the traffic light. She thanked them for making the intersection safer. Another neighbor called us after we left out here to get this story ready for you and said that she wanted to just call and let her voice be heard that she loves the intersection and she thinks it's making this area safer. The county says that this intersection will be completely installed with that traffic light on March 13th. We'll stay on top of this story for you as it develops. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Thanks, Kirsten. Now, you did mention that there's a school nearby, also a private preschool. How far away are those schools from these lights? Yeah, it's just a few hundred feet, a short walk. I would think if they're small kids, it may be a longer walk, but it's just a short walk from this line that there is a school, a elementary private school as well, and a Kaiser medical facility. Seems like a busy intersection behind you. Uh, having trouble with your signal, we'll let you go for now. Thanks for the very least on that. San Diego City Attorney Mara Elliott is pushing to strengthen laws to protect reproductive rights here in San Diego. This follows Alabama's state Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos are children and people who destroy the embryos can be held liable for wrongful death. Elliott wants to update laws to protect women from harassment when they seek care at reproductive clinics. Elliott says her office plans to introduce an ordinance at a public safety committee meeting next month. If you're 65 or older, you're being urged tonight to get an additional dose of the current COVID-19 vaccine. That's according to independent advisors who made the recommendation to the CDC today. The director of the CDC must sign off on it before this policy becomes final. According to the agency, the current vaccine is considered highly effective, but its protection does wane over time and fades more quickly in older people. The new recommendation indicates seniors could get an additional dose of any updated vaccine at least four months after the previous dose.